Okay, I hope you are ready for 19,000 3D Mark Port Royal scores because that's definitely what this graphics card has been designed for. So the most anticipated graphics card of this year arrived on my doorstep during this week and I think it's time to finally take a proper look at it. So we already know the story with the Kimpin uh, series graphics cards. They have been truly awesome for many years now. I think the first Kimpin model was introduced in like 2014 with the 780 Ti uh, GPU from Nvidia, but they had the original classified series of graphics cards all the way since uh, I think 2009 with the GTX 285 that had the unofficial support for 4-way SLI. And then of course they had the GTX 580 classified and so on. But now it's mostly about the Kimpin. So the RTX 3090 Kimpin should definitely be one of the best, if not the best, 3090 model for overclocking purposes. So uh, I think the RTX 3090 Kimpin should be very similar to the previous 2080 Ti Kimpin, uh, like uh, both of them should have like an AIO water cooler by default and they also have the very fancy OLED display, although it should be heavily improved now with the uh, 3090 uh, model. So uh, let's just take an unboxing and overview first in this one and then let's make a separate test video later where, we'll, where we will actually test the actual graphics card like how it performs by default, what kind of temperatures it has, how does the cooler perform, then uh, how does it boost uh, at stock and then how can we actually overclock the graphics card. So just to keep the video relatively short, let's take a proper look at the graphics card first in this one. So the card or the packaging of the graphics card is very simple in many ways. So just huge Kimpin logo at the front and a nice text over here underneath the logo. So uh, the GeForce RTX 3090 Kimpin continues the dominant legacy of its predecessors and once again uh, defines the pinnacle of overclocking engineering and performance by Vince Lucido. So yeah, 24 gigs of VRAM and so on, but they aren't really uh, advertised that much uh, on the packaging itself. So the packaging itself is actually quite simple. So let's just open, open this box and see what comes with the actual card. Okay. Okay. Was quite sticky, but yeah, so now we have the thing unboxed, so let's open up these tapes and let's see what's inside the protective, the protective packaging or is there actually an easier way to remove this. Okay, so what we have over here, probably some, so we have a case badge and probably some guides screws, zip ties, the probit connectors, and some cable ties, I think. We have a coupon code for ultimate capture device, but I might not show that one because I might use it myself later. Some overall guides and so on. Yeah. Damn, this thing is actually quite hard to unbox. There's the cooler, should be a triple slot one, so three times 120. Just need to take it out very. So yeah, the 3090 Kimpin is definitely one of the hardest graphics cards to unbox, but that's how the way it is. So uh, yeah, 360 AIO radiator 
on the card by default. It's well, it's probably good, but it's also quite hard to uh, install this one. So definitely make sure you have a case that will support this monster. I think a monster is a very good word to describe this thing. Yeah, and that's how the back side of the card looks like. So a big Kimpin logo over there, we have, we can already see there are some dip switches over there, like 4 times 2 probably some uh, low line calibration stuff and so on, and here's the big OLED display. But now, apparently, it should be much much better than before. So I actually damaged the one on mine uh, in the original one that I have on the 2080 Ti Kimpin. So I never actually got to use the OLED display of the 2080 Ti, because I found it very hard to remove the whole uh, heatsink assembly without tearing the uh, OLED display apart with the other, I mean with the whole heatsink assembly I mean. So I think I will not remove the heatsink assembly in this one. I, want, I may want to just try the card first. So uh, let's just remove the plastics first. Yeah, and ha that's the, how the front side looks. So we have a fan blowing towards the VRM area of the card. Here, a bit hard to show you on camera, but I'll try to. We have the probit connector headers over here, and they are actually labeled on the uh, sh plastic shroud on the heatsink. So we have, from uh, counting from this end, we have the NVVDD, which is the GPU voltage. Then we have I think we have a ground pin, as the sec every second pin is a ground pin. So GPU, the memory is the third one. We have PEX voltage, which should be a PLL, and as the fifth one. Then we have 1.8 volt voltage measurement, that should be the seventh pin. And MSVDD is a new voltage apparently, and it's the second last pin when counted from right. And we have three bosses, once again we have normal, OC and LN2. Not sure if they differ that much at the hardware level, but again, if you put this card on LN2, you should use the Extreme OC BIOS on the LN2 switch. And the OLED display actually turns, or should turn like this. So uh, you can have it pointing the way you wish. So if the graphics card is placed in a case in its normal orientation, you can just turn the OLED display uh, 90 degrees so that you can actually see it through a case window and if you use it on the test bench you can just turn it all the way around is it yeah, in the normal orientation or 180 degrees and then you can actually read all of the important stuff so let's just turn it back for now and here you can see the small dip switches for mainly for ln to use but of course for that purpose it's easier the easiest way to access those uh, dip switches when the whole uh, backplate has been removed. And when looking at the uh, I.O. part of the card, we have three standard uh, display ports and one HDMI. And hard to show this part of the card, but yeah. So at the back side of the card, we have three 8 pin power connectors. Should be more than enough to provide enough power for the card. We have an EV bot connector and a fourth pin fan header. So they, st they still support EV bot, uh, EV bot with this graphics card model, although I never used the EV bot with the 2080 Ti Kim pin. So uh, I would stick to the uh, classified.exe for these newer generations of classified and classified Kim pin because they are actually very good to use. So there's still the option to use an EV bot. If you have one, that thing hasn't been uh, produced to the market for many years now, so it has long been discontinued thing from EVGA, but it's still being supported. So uh, you can use that one even with the 3090 Kimpin if you wish, but I would just stick to the uh, uh, software in Windows uh, for overclocking the graphics card and sending all of the voltages. So I think that's for now. I. I really want to test the card first before taking the whole thing apart. 
so I think that's enough for now so not that many accessories came with the actual card so just the installation manual stickers or one case patch zip ties screws and so on so nothing very important and that coupon code for a capture card device Th th those are pretty much all of the accessories you get with this actual card. So uh, I think it looks alright. The uh, AIO cooler is definitely good, but it's very clumsy to use and to move around. So it's very sad that now it seems that I cannot use my very uh, long serving GPU only water block from EK on this card model. So, uh, so I have to stick to the original. Uh, uh, cooler from EVGA and it's very annoying because you, when you uh, when this whole thing is so huge uh, it's very hard to go back and forth with your own uh, with your own cooling solution and with the stock one so uh, let's say uh, you, dis you disassemble the whole cooling solution you use the card once on LN2 and then you want to go back to just uh, water cooling it's very uh, like clumsy thing to move around so that's just my personal opinion so uh, it's not all like the fault of uh, EVGA, it's more the thing from NVIDIA that they don't have a more simple mounting. Although maybe you could produce like a custom mounting plate of your own for your GPU only water block, but I'll, I will have to see if there's a solution so that, I, so that I could use my own water block on the GPU. But yeah, so I hope you like to see this card in a close view like this, although it's not very uh, sophisticated way of doing things, but I wanted to do this first, so the card definitely seems all right. And now we just have to see how the card performs. So stay tuned to that one. It will be coming out soon.